welcome my dear learners for this course on tribology so far we have discussed the introductory concepts of idealized full journal bearing let us continue from the point where we have stopped in our previous lecture in today's lecture let us discuss the significance of summerfeld number or bearing characteristic number today's topic is significance of bcn significance of bearing characteristic number or summerfeld number now you know to discuss the significance of summerfeld number i should make use of our design data handbook written by k lingaya we are referring volume 2 8th edition chapter number 24 in our data handbook if i look at the equation of bearing characteristic number or summerfeld number which is given by s is equal to eta n dash by p into 1 by z square and also it is given by in terms of eccentricity, eccentricity ratio as 2 plus eta square into root of 1 plus 1 minus eta square divided by 12 pi epsilon right where epsilon is eccentricity ratio or attitude now if you clearly observe bearing characteristic number is a function of attitude or eccentricity ratio alone so therefore if i plot summerfeld number versus eccentricity ratio we have a graph that is a plot of epsilon and s yes, that is summerfeld number which is given by eta n dash by p into 1 by z square versus epsilon the graph is like this we have a separation for heavily loaded bearing and lightly loaded bearing where s is 0 0.15 i will tell you how we got the value of s as 0 0.15 this bisection will gives us the region for lightly loaded bearing and heavily loaded bearing now how we got the value of summerfeld number at 0 0.15 the bisection between the summerfeld uh, heavily loaded bearing and lightly loaded bearing you have to understand that i should consider friction so in case 2 considering friction if i analyze the summerfeld number if i consider friction we have from equation twenty four point four four f mu is equal to four pi square eta n dash l d times one plus two epsilon square divided by z of 2 plus epsilon square into root of 1 minus epsilon square now you know to get the essence of summerfeld number let us define a parameter f mu dash which is given by f mu by ld therefore i can write f mu as f mu dash ld somewhat similar to bearing pressure let us define a term to get a similar term as summerfeld number now if i substitute that in this equation and simplify what i'll get f mu dash ld is equal to 4 pi square eta n dash ld times 1 plus 2 epsilon square divided by z of 
2 plus epsilon square into root of 1 minus epsilon square right so if I simplify I will get eta n dash by f mu dash eta n dash by f mu dash into 1 by xi will be equal to only eccentricity ratio 2 plus epsilon square into root of 1 minus epsilon square whole divided by 4 pi square of 1 plus 2 into epsilon square. Now if you look at this equation, LHS is a function of attitude only. We have only attitude epsilon that is eccentricity ratio. Whereas eccentricity ratio is a function of Sommerfeld number. Correct? LHS is a function of attitude. Attitude is a function of Sommerfeld number. So therefore, we can plot a graph referring to figure from figure 24.15c page 24.19 that is attitude is a function of Sommerfeld number hence we have a plot of LHS versus Sommerfeld number which is, is like this yes and we have a curve like this here we have the LHS that is eta n dash by xi times f mu dash now we know that for lightly loaded bearings eccentricity is zero right we know that for lightly loaded bearings for lightly loaded bearings eccentricity is zero hence attitude must be equal to zero right so therefore if I substitute attitude or eccentricity ratio as zero and simplify I will get the LHS as left hand side that is this term will be equal to 0 0.05 0 0.05 this LHS will become 0 0.05 put epsilon as 0 here also you put 0 here also you put 0 it will be 2 divided by 4 pi square 2 divided by 4 pi square is 0 0.05 so at 0 0.05 if I cut this at 0 0.05 if I cut this and come down I will found that S will be equal to 0 0.15 at 0 0.05 I will cut this arc and come down and see S will become 0 0.15 so beyond 0 0.15 beyond 0 0.15 the region belongs to lightly loaded bearings below 0 0.15 the region belongs to heavily loaded bearings how we got S as 0 0.15? We got S is equal to 0 0.15 by considering friction into account. Rearrange the friction e equation and substitute attitude or eccentricity ratio as 0 and we will found the LHS as 0 0.05. So from the graph if I go at 0 0.05 and intersect the curve and come down, I will found that Summerfield number as 0 0.15 which gives us the boundary for lightly loaded and heavily loaded bearing. Now you know, to understand much better, let us consider friction. So if I consider friction into account, what happens? That is, in case 3, consider friction. The coefficient of friction, that is, considering coefficient of friction, considering coefficient of friction 
for heavily loaded bearings hlb stands for heavily loaded bearings for heavily loaded bearings we have the equation mu is equal to z times 1 plus 2 epsilon square by 3 epsilon this is equation 24.47 so if i rearrange mu by epsilon sorry mu by z which is function of attitude only that is 1 plus 2 epsilon square by 3 epsilon you can see that mu by z is a function of eccentricity ratio only similarly for lightly loaded bearings mu is given by our petrov's equation that is 2 pi square eta n dash by p into 1 by z petrov's equation for lightly loaded bearings now if i consider so this is equation 24.46 Now for lightly loaded bearings, if I consider mu by z, z, this will be equal to 2 pi square eta n dash by p into 1 by z square. We know that eta n dash by p into 1 by z square is Sommerfeld number. Eta n dash by p into 1 by z square is Sommerfeld number. Therefore, for lightly loaded bearings, mu by z is a function of Sommerfeld number yes so hence I can plot mu by z versus Sommerfeld number and see what happens that is referring to figure referring to figure 24.19 in page number 24.19 plot of mu by z versus Sommerfeld number with yield a curve like this let us take this as equation b this is equation A. Dotted line is equation B. Both will meet when S is 0 0.15. So from the plot of mu by z versus Sommerfeld number, it can be seen that the curve of heavily loaded bearing and the lightly loaded bearing will meet when s is equal to 0 0.15 at s is equal to 0 0.15 if you see equation a and equation b will intersect each other so therefore above 0 0.15 it is a region for lightly loaded bearing below 0 0.15 it is heavily loaded bearing so this is the region for lightly loaded bearing and this is the region for heavily loaded bearing So from these three analysis, what is our conclusion? The significance of Sommerfeld number is that if Sommerfeld number is less than 0.15, then the bearing is heavily loaded bearings. If Sommerfeld number is greater than 0 0.15 then the bearing is lightly loaded bearings HLB stands for heavily loaded bearing LLB stands for lightly loaded bearing and what is our second inference second inference is that if you clearly observe Sommerfeld number is not only the function of attitude or eccentricity ratio it is also the function of eta viscosity speed n dash and z that is 
diametrical clearance ratio. Now, for a lightly loaded bearings, if I change the viscosity and speed of the bearing such a way that I will get the Sommerfeld number less than 0.15, then the lightly loaded bearing can also act as heavily loaded bearing. So therefore, the lightly loaded bearing does not depends only on the load acting on it. It also depends on speed and viscosity. So hence, for lightly loaded bearings, for lightly loaded bearing, load is not the only criteria. Load is not the only criterion. Load is not the only criteria. If we change the speed of the journal, if we change the speed and viscosity of the lubricating oil, if we change the speed and viscosity, if we change the speed and viscosity such that S becomes Summerfield number becomes less than 0 0.15 less than 0 0.15 then then lightly loaded bearing behaves like heavily loaded bearing then lightly loaded bearing behaves like heavily loaded bearing. So these two are the major significance of Summerfeld number. That's all from this lecture. Thank you all.